Good morning, Real Liberty Media. This is Flash at the Dropping a Coil Show with Larry Woods and Rob Works. And and today is the 25th of June, 2020, so far. <laughs> we made it, guys. We're almost there. <sighs> anyway, we've got uh, the thank you to Grimner for giving us a little place to do our radio thing. And uh, we got Box and Bodies for your chatting entertainment in the RLM chat. Barman and Beetle, Grimner, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, underscore, and Anti. Uh, and Eyes, Triple Dipper. Asmo, Chess, Doni, Circlo, Dan Van Meter, Me, Frump Work, Graham Z, Maestro, Prince, Rob Works, Trust, No One, Us, Van White, Weather Dark, Phantom, Chloe Singular, Cyborg, Noodle, Ensive, Frumpy, Jay's Nights, nice, Jay's Kiss, L Woods, Zero One, Hey Larry, Matt, WJ, Two O O T, Ponsas, Sack Puppet, Salvener, A Wart, and the holiest, Roger. So if you're in a chatty kind of mood while we're doing the show, you're on the RLM, those are the folks you have to speak with. So, today we've got Larry and Rob, and I think Rob wants to start the show out today. You Thank guys you. want to say hey? Hey. Hey. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know why you think I want to start the show. Well, okay, I misunderstood that thing. Uh, 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 I was just having a little rant, rant about this mm-hmm. morning going out and seeing all the masked idiots, and it just, just, you know... One of those things, you know. Got to wait in line to get into the hardware store. Got to wow. wait in line to get into the restaurant. We were, we were out eating the other night, and we ate at a restaurant next to Chipotle's. And they had a line going out the door and halfway around the Dad Blaine building. It was ridiculous. At Chipotle's? Yeah. It's like, who want to eat there anyway? Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> we we didn't. We we were at one next to it. <laughs> the one that was right there, but not it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. You guys want the bad news? Sure. Power well, on. Go for it. Any any <laughs> any kind of retail or com- commercial business that's open here doesn't do any of that. Where I live. Well, no, no they, they might be doing it in Copenhagen, but Cirque went yesterday, and she said on the way to town, she only saw one mask. Wow. And then she went, went out to a bar with some friends after work, and she never said anything about social distancing or masks or nothing, so I, I think the Danes grew out of it. Uh, it's just, uh... Well, everything was voluntary here from the get-go. Nobody except for shutting down business is why I think the dollar crashed. Yeah. But uh, outside of that, we've had no interruptions, uh, no price hikes on necessities yet, but we expect it in the future. Oh, yeah. I went to, uh, to the store this morning, and bacon is going crazy. Uh, I got a haircut. For a package of bacon. <laughs> I got a haircut, and the price of haircuts here doubled from fifteen to thirty dollars. Wow! Oh, well, I'm gonna grow my hair again. Mine didn't. <laughs> All right, my barber, well, they didn't see, me. and then and then again, uh, the signs in the windows at the barber across from the bar where I I go regularly, nothing changed. For a few days after they opened, a few people were wearing masks, but that all ended like in about three or four days. Yeah. And it was all voluntary, and they were trying to please people, and it just more or less made them more stay away. So they stopped the masks, and business is getting back to normal. It's time people woke up and made this shit go away. They won't. Well, I did send a link. To you guys to for your perusal, just about just that exact topic. Yeah, you want to you want to read that one, Rob? Yeah, I can do that. 
I'll put it, you want to put it in the, in the site and all that? Yeah, too, or? I'll post it. Okay. All right. It's called We Could Open Up Again and Forget the Whole Thing. I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. I posted this previously in the chat. I might have stole it from you. I don't know. Um, I know I saw it before. Um, <laughs> But it's an interview with an epidemiologist uh, by the name of Newt Witkowski on the deadly consequences of lockdown. And uh, the uh, introduction starts out. Governments around the world say they're following the science with their draconian measures to stem the spread of the virus. But the science around COVID-19 is bitterly contested. Many experts have serious doubts about the effectiveness of the measures and argue that our outside fears of COVID-19 are not justified. Newt Witkowski is one such expert who has long argued for a change of course. For 20 years, Witkowski has, was the head of biostatistics, epidemiology, and research design at the Rockefeller University Center for Clinical and Translational Science. Spike spoke to him to find out more about the pandemic. This uh, the website uh, is called Spiked, and that's who is doing the interview. And so Spiked asks, is COVID-19 dangerous? Newt replies, no, unless you have age-related severe comorbidities. So if you're in a nursing home because you cannot live by yourself anymore, then getting infected is quite dangerous. We had the other extreme in Switzerland, which was hit pretty hard. There was one child that died. People believe that this child was born in 2011. In fact, it was born in 1911, and that was the only child that died. It was a mere coding error. Somebody with the age of 108 was coded as aged 8. <laughs> yeah, isn't that something? So, yeah. So, and then Spike asked, how far along is the epidemic? Bukowski says it's over in China, it's over in South Korea, it's substantially down in most of Europe and down a bit everywhere, even in the UK. The UK and Belarus are latecomers, so you do not see exactly what you're seeing in continental Europe. But everywhere in Europe, the number of cases is substantially declining. And Spike Dass has our interventions made much of an impact. He responds, when the whole thing started, there was one reason given for the lockdown, and that was to prevent hospitals from becoming overloaded. There's no indication that hospitals could ever have become overloaded, irrespective of what we did. So we could open up again and forget the whole thing. (laughs) I hope the intervention did not have too much of an impact because it most likely made the situation worse, just like the masks are. I said that. The intervention, was to, the intervention was uh, supposedly to flatten the curve. That means that there would be the same number of cases, but spread out over a longer period of time, uh, because otherwise the hospitals would not have enough capacity. That was the whole excuse for the whole thing. Now we know children and young adults do not end up in hospitals. It's only those who are both elderly and have comorbidities that do. Therefore, you have to protect the elderly in the nursing homes. The ideal approach would be to simply shut the door of the nursing homes and keep the personnel and the elderly locked in for a certain amount of time and pay the staff overtime to stay there for 24 hours per day. How how long can you do that for? Uh, For three weeks. That is possible. For 18 months, it is not. The flattening of the curve, the prolongation of the epidemic, makes it more difficult to protect the to protect the elderly who are at risk. More of the elderly people become infected and we have more deaths. Spike asks, what are the dangers of the lockdown? uh, Firstly, we have the direct consequences. Suicides, domestic violence, and other social consequences leading to death. And then we have people who are too scared to go to the hospitals for other problems like strokes or heart attacks. Those people stay away from the hospitals because of the COVID fear, and then they die for lack of treatment. Spike that, uh, were hospitals likely to be overrun? Wachowski says, Germany had 8,000 deaths and a population of 85 million. They had 20,000 to 30,000 hospitalizations. In Germany, that is nothing. It does not even show up as a blip in the hospital t- statistics. 
In Britain, the highest hospital utilization was about 60%, if I'm not mistaken. In New York City, it was a bit higher. The Javits Congress Center was turned into a field hospital with 3,000 beds. It treated just 1,000 patients in total. The Navy ship, ship sent to New York by President Trump had 179 patients, but it was but it was sent back because it was not needed. New York is the epicenter of the epidemic in the United States, and even in the epicenter, hospital utilization was only up a bit, nothing dramatic, nothing out of the ordinary. That is what happens during the flu season. People have the flu, and then there are more patients in the hospitals than there otherwise would be. Spike asks, why are we on the way to reaching herd immunity? Wachowski replies, all the studies that have been done have shown that we already have at least 25% of the population who are immune. That gives us a nice cushion. If 25% of the population are already immune, we are very quickly getting to the 50% needed to have what is called herd immunity. We will actually get a bit higher than that. So we've flattened what otherwise would have been a peak. And if we now let it run, even if the number of cases would increase a bit, it would not go as high as it was because we already have enough immune people in the population. So it's not going to spread as fast as it could have in the beginning. Uh, Spike asks, should we worry about a second spike? He just told you. We can <laughs> 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 Fucking wrong. <laughs> wow, I thought Terry was man. creative. Uh, <laughs> fucking pay attention. Guess what? <laughs> this is an invention to justify a policy that politicians are afraid of reversing. Because if they reverse it, then people might realize, hey, everything is bullshit. Fucking with us. Yeah. Should people practice social distancing? No. Why not? Why? Or why? What is the justification for that? People need to ask the government for an explanation. The government is restricting freedom. You do not have to ask me for justification. There is no justification. It is the government that has to justify what is what it is doing. Sorry, but that is how it is. How did how did we get this so wrong? Governments did not have an open discussion, including economists, biologists, and epidemiologists, to hear different voices. In Britain, it was the voice of one person, Neil Ferguson, who has a history of coming up with projections that are a bit odd. The government did not convene a meeting with people who have different ideas, different projections, to discuss his projection. If it had done that, it could have been where the fundamental flaw was in the so-called models used by Neil Ferguson. It could have seen where the fundamental flaw was in the so-called models used by Neil Ferguson. His paper was published eventually in MedRxIB. Uh, I suppose that's a medical journal. Um, the assumption was that 1% of all people who became infected would die. There is no justification anywhere for that number. Let us say the epidemic runs with a basic reproduction rate of around 2. Eventually, 80% of the population will be immune because they've been infected, been infected at some point in time. 80% of the British population would be something like 50 million. 1% of them dying is 500,000. That is where Ferguson's name, number came from. But we knew from the very beginning that neither in Wuhan nor in South Korea did 1% of all people infected die. South Korea has 60 million people. It's about the same size as the UK. How many deaths were in South Korea? Did they shut down? No. The South Korean government was extremely proud to have resisted pressure to drop the very basic concept concepts of democracy. <laughs> South yeah. Korea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> South Korea is uh, <laughs> looking a haven uh, of democracy. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little more democratic. <laughs> okay, I'm done. The epidemic in South Korea was over by March. The number of cases was down by 13. In Wuhan, they also did not shut down the economy. Wuhan had restricted travel out of the city. They stopped train services and blocked the roads. They did not restrict anything social within the city until very late. We have seen then in Wuhan and South Korea, if you do not do anything, the epidemic is over in three weeks. So we're actually driving this fucking thing out. Um. Following these mandates. Anyways, uh, continuing. 
Knowing that the epidemic would be over in three weeks and the number of people dying would be minor, just like a normal flu, the government started shutting down in mid-March. Why? Because somebody pulled it out of his ass, I mean head, that 1% of all infected would die. And one could argue that maybe 1% of all cases would die, but 1% of all people infected does not make any sense. And we had that evidence by mid-March. So just to clarify, cases are different from people infected? Yeah, cases means people who have symptoms that are serious enough for them to go to a hospital or get treated. Most people have no symptoms at all, but waking up with a sore throat one day is not a case. A case means that someone showed up in a hospital. Despite that, the UK government was also heavily influenced by the situation in Italy. Why did that go so wrong? Wow. Witkowski uh, replies, what we saw in Italy was that the virus was hitting those who were both old and had comorbidities. So lots of people died. But the median age of those who died in Italy was around 81 years. It is not that children or working people were dying. It was the elderly in nursing homes, not even the elderly living by themselves mostly. We saw lots of deaths and that scared people. But then Italy did an illogical thing. It closed schools so that the school children were isolated and did not get infected and did not become immune. Instead, the virus spread almost exclusively among the old, causing more deaths and a higher utilization of hospitals. And that is mind-boggling. Very early on, we knew from China and we knew from South Korea that this is an epidemic that runs its course. And there was nothing special about it. But when it hit Italy, we stopped thinking about it as an age-stratified problem and instead lumped everyone all together. The idea that if we did not shut down the schools, the hospitals would have been overwhelmed does not make any sense. I think we still cannot fully understand how our governments can be so stupid. <laughs> Spike asked, Go, uh, Governments say they are following that the science. Is that really true? <laughs> yeah, science yeah. fiction. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I saw a virus on TV. Yeah. By the way, all the pictures you see of the little virus with the ball with the little spikes on it, every, every single drawing. one of them, they're all CGI. They're all drawn. Yeah, yeah. they're all. Man made, right? Renditions like and CGI uh, fantasizations of. What they yeah, might look like. Yeah. People are gullible, Rob. Yeah. I, I didn't know. I think you, you knew that, though, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, so the question was: Governments say they're following science. Is that really true? Uh, Wachowski says they have the scientists on their side that depend on government funding. Of course, we know mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. One scientist in Germany just got five hundred million from the government because all, because he always says what the government wants to hear. And that's the people they hire. Scientists are in a very strange situation. They now depend on government funding, which is a trend that has developed over the past 40 years. Before that, when you were a professor at a university, you had your salary and you had your freedom. Now the university gives you a desk and access to the library, and then you have to ask for government money and write grant applications. If you are known to criticize the government, what does that do, your, do to your chance of getting funded? It's all over it. It creates a huge conflict of interest, and the people who are speaking out in Germany and Switzerland are all independent of government money because they retired. They are retired. Spike asked, did the Swedish scientists get it right? Wachowski said that Sweden did the right thing, and they had to take a lot of heat for it. Now compare Sweden and the UK. The only difference is that Sweden did fine. They did have a problem. They had a relatively high number of deaths among the nursing homes. They decided to keep society open and they forgot to close nursing homes. Remarkably, the politicians acknowledged that it was a mistake to extend that open concept to nursing homes. The nursing homes should have been isolated to protect the elderly who are at high risk. But I think the Swedish government is doing well to even acknowledge that mistake. The first death in the United States was in a, in a nursing home in Seattle, and that was by the end of February. So everybody knew that we were expecting the same thing that we had seen in Italy, an epidemic that hits the elderly. But until just this week in New York State, the government told the nursing homes that if they did not take in patients from hospitals, they would lose their funding. So they would have to import the virus from hospitals. 
One third of all deaths in New York State were in nursing homes. One could have prevented 20,000 deaths in the United States by just isolating the nursing homes. After three or four weeks, they could have reopened and everybody would have been happy. That would have been a reasonable strategy, but shutting down schools, driving the economy against the wall, there was no reason for it. The only reason this nonsense now goes on and on and people are inventing things like this second wave bullshit, which is going to change <laughs> society and never live again. True. Is that the politics? Is that the politicians are afraid of admitting they were fucking wrong? Is this easier yeah. to see in hindsight? <laughs> yeah. Because she responds, what I am talking about is not hindsight. The epidemics in Wuhan and South Korea were over in mid-March. In March, I submitted a paper to, to the medical journal summarizing all of that. At least towards the end of March, the data was there, and everybody who wanted to learn from it could. On April 17th, Robert Redfield, director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, I mean, uh, the uh, Centers for the Disease Propagation and, and, and uh, Spread, presented <laughs> data at the coronavirus presidential briefing at the White House. And there was one plot that he presented, and I looked at it, and that's why people were not jumping to their feet. Why were people not understanding what they were looking at? The plot was the data from the Illinet, I L I N E N. For 15 years, hospitals have counted every person who shows up with an influenza like illness fever, coughing, whatever. There were three spikes in the 2019 2020 flu season. The first was in late December, influenza B. The next was in late January, an influenza A epidemic. And then there was one that had a peak in hospital visits around the 8th of March, COVID 19. For the peak to happen on that day, those patients have to go through a seven-day incubation period and, they, and then have symptoms. But they do not go to the hospital with the first symptoms. If it gets worse over three days, only then do they go to the hospital. Four weeks later, on April 8th, the number of new infections was already down in time for Easter. Our government should have acknowledged they were overly cautious. People would have accepted that. Two weeks shut down would not have been the end of the world. We would not have what we have now. 30 million people unemployed in the United States, for example. Companies do not go bankrupt over a two-week period. Two months is a very different story. If you have to pay rent for two months for a restaurant in New York with no income, you will go bankrupt. We see unemployment. We see bankruptcies. We see a lot of money wasted for economic rescue packages. Trillions of dollars in the United States long. We see more deaths and illness than we would otherwise have had. And it's going on and on and on, just because governments are afraid of admitting they were wrong. <laughs> trying to find excuses. They say they have to do things slowly and that they've avoided 500,000 deaths in the UK. <laughs> but that was an absurd number that had no justification. The person presenting it pretended it was based on a model. It was not a model. It was the number of 1% of all people infected dying. And nobody was questioning it. And that is the basic problem. And that's right. The failure to question bullshit gets us what we got. <laughs> well, how eloquently put, sir. Yeah. Spark asks, people will say that the interventions in South Korea, like contact tracing, were more effective. Rakowski responds, how many orders of magnitude take us from 500,000 to 256, the number of deaths in South Korea? To have that kind of effect, you have to put everybody in the UK into a negative pressure room. It is totally unrealistic to even consider a, redu a reduction from 500,000 to 256. Hmm. What do you think, Larry? I think it's all BS, and I only have one thing that I disagree with. A group of sheep is called a flock, not a herd. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean old bastard. <laughs> no. Well, oh, man. You, were, you were talking before. before we, oh, hold on. I'll be right back. A talk of the killer dog. Help, help. <laughs> Somebody let the crack and loose. Oh, yeah, she gets emotional sometimes. Some people sense 
or color of clothing or something gets her worked up. She doesn't bark at everyone. But what she does, she does. She goes off. Anyway, but I was going to remark that uh, we were talking before the show about how prices for certain things have doubled already. <laughs> yeah, uh, I went and got a haircut recently, and it used to be $15 before this, and now it's 30 I think they're trying to make back all the money at one time. Yeah. Well, they got bankers breathing down their throat for money, don't they? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And they call it, they call it, it trickle down? <laughs> yeah, yeah, trickle down. Yeah. Get out of the way, it's acid. Yeah, I did have a similar thing at the breakfast this morning in the restaurant. I usually get the breakfast special, which is bacon, two eggs, and two pancakes. Five ninety nine. Well, then this morning they got it to seven ninety nine. Yeah. Well, and, and they're just totally right. It's not where I mean the regular breakfast, two egg breakfast that comes with hash browns and, and a biscuit instead of pancakes um, for the same price. Actually, no, six ninety nine, a dollar less than the actual breakfast quote special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's special. And yeah. so are you for buying it. Yeah, you're real special. Yeah, you get to ride the little bus. <laughs> <laughs> Can I drive? <laughs> I want to drive the bus. You don't drive. Oh, uh, yeah, I did. Well, I know well, how to drive. You, drive. Drive. you, you said you don't car. drive. No, I haven't driven a no car driving since 2011. Oh, but it's see, not like you well, forget how. I want to ride with you then. It's like riding a bicycle. You just got to get behind the wheel. Okay, well, you go, you go uh, work the kinks out and, and 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 the rest by yourself for a while, and then you can drive with me in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're coming to Denmark Tuesday, right? Yeah, I'll be there. Uh, I'll tell you, you guys. I teleporters. All the horrible stuff that I've seen every day on the interwebs about this. Right next door to us, Germany, too. It's only a about, I don't know, maybe 100 miles to the German border. Yeah. It's not that far. I mean, we're just far away from it, but it's close. Anyway, Germany, a Germany had, had a guy, had a doctor uh, go against the system and get uh, not get punished for his, his comments by the court. Then he appealed it, went to a higher court. I think his name, virologist, I found the link. He's a virologist, whatever the hell that is. I'll put the link in the it's RLM or the wire. Well, I'll put it in the RLM. And uh, that's a small win for the small guy because they, they just ruined him. His name is uh, Stephen Stephen Lanka. So the link explains it way better than I did because I was going off memory until I could find it. But I don't know if you – it's not a reading link. I don't think it we had. Well, it had a yeah. There's some text to it, but what the guy that made the link did was he it, the interviews in German, but he uh, he does it in English. He's got some kind of accent too, so he does it in English for us English speaking people. The mm -hmm. what the doctor says in in German, right. so he translates for translates. I never seen a link like that before. It was unique to me. Yeah, I'm isolated. But well, all them saying is that there's, you know, as badly as we've been treated, there's people that have the balls to go forward and stand their ground no matter what, and this guy's one of them. You know, there's a lot more uh, than you know, too, because obviously they, they get suppressed and uh, shadow banned and mm -hmm. deleted on, on all the social media, so... There's a lot more speaking out than we don't even know about because we don't have, we don't get to hear about them. Yeah, exactly. We we on that. Just like yeah. after 9-11, they had the architects and engineers. <laughs> yeah. Shut them all up. <laughs> yeah. But you never heard about them till years later. Isn't that familiar territory, Larry, like they're doing to you with your coil? Yes, sir. Same shit. Mm -hmm. Yep, same stuff. Suppression of anything that can challenge their power. Hmm. Well, I, I'm not challenging anybody's power. I'm just avoiding it. Well, actually, you are. Wow, you, you that's do, a matter of opinion. You do, ra you do radio shows. You give opinions that are anti-establishment. 
I mean, yeah, but luckily I don't have a huge audience. Track. Like that, see, there's, there's the key is how much traction are you getting? You start Very to get little. a little trash and see if they don't come down on you like oh. a freaking ball peen hammer. Yep, you I know that. the re-education count. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we I got the guillotines there and all the body bags. We're going to re-educate your ass to death. But I failed the first education. How could I be re-educated? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't take the first time, so, hmm. Yeah. Nah, I think it's That's just right, a bunch Grandpa. of crap. To keep people that are scared already into in it, like you guys taught me about the vibrations and frequency. Yeah. If the system keeps us in this state of mind with their words, then you're going to get a big amount of the response is going to be exactly what you want it to be. Yep. Because average Joe can't think for himself. It's foreign. They get feelings confused with thinking. That's what I think. Yeah. And I read today that uh, they're already stop, stopping some of the Antifa nonsense going on back home. I think it's set in Seattle. Yeah, but yeah they're, shutting how, the, they're shutting the ch chairs chop thing down in Seattle finally. Because yeah. people, wow. people were getting murdered and they wouldn't let Is any of that there. true, though? I mean, is it just... Who see, knows? we've been lied to Who for knows? so long. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can't... Uh, you can't confirm anything unless you were there. Exactly. But we read a lot of stuff, man. We see videos. I saw a video today that also goes to point out that there's two different people in that George Floyd thing that started all this crap. One of them's got a head of hair. Another one's bald with no legs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the I, same I, guy. You know, I, I, don't even get, I don't even get wrapped up in that shit because... I mean, I'm in the, it, happens, I it happens every time. Even if it's real, mm -hmm. they, the, the, the disinformation goes out. They throw all these different bullshit stories out there uh, just to poison the well, to confuse people, to, to have all these right. different conspiracy theories or whatever you want to call them uh -huh. running around, going around. And... Uh, so nobody really knows. They really did that uh, big time on the uh, the big uh, Las Vegas shooting. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. But you know, at the time, I wasn't so uh, in tune with being fooled at that level. Yeah. So for the first couple of things I saw, I was pretty much seeing, believing what I saw. I mean, and it, it took me like a couple of days to start. Shit, what what is out. all this? Yeah. Well, I'm way over here in Denmark, too, so it was like... Anyway, Larry just put up uh, his uh, Facebook information for us. I'm going to put that in the notes for you, Larry. Uh, that's, that's about a cannon, uh, a fertilizer cannon that they should use to clear out all the uh, taken over areas. Oh, wow. Yeah, spray all the... That person has been... Uh, Real Liberty Media chat. Yeah. Yeah, I, I put a copy in the, in the notes. Yeah, yeah. But I have trouble opening Facebook while I'm live on the radio. I don't want to yeah. do any more damage. To, boy, I'll tell you, I had but, a terrible takeoff on Tuesday night. <laughs> I shouldn't be allowed to touch a computer without adult supervision. Yeah, me too. I agree with that 100%. Bring me a kid. Let him teach me how to use this silly thing. I muted my microphone on something that some setting that Grim couldn't find. And he spent like 20 minutes trying to figure out what did, what did I do this time. And I, I remembered it, but I, trying to explain it to him was making him laugh because I talk in, you know, nerd. When I'm talking computer, it sounds really stupid. <laughs> you know, the, the thing, it's the clicky thing, and you push it twice, and then you... <laughs> <laughs> that kind of time. Yeah. Yeah. Grip's kind of beyond all that. And, and I'm still well, I'm still a little slow. What an icon. Oh. <laughs> this is why I jumped all over this when Rob said, I'll do the radio part. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, make it easy for me. Yeah, it's easy for me, though. So what what exactly did you post the, um, the uh, information for Facebook for so we can get clear on that? He was posting a picture of a manure cannon. 
Oh, okay. I couldn't open the whole thing. I just uh, see his a, smiling face. It's a, a it's cannon for, for spreading uh, slurry. He kind of looks like a cross. gangster from the yeah. 70s. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a gang boss. The pit, the pit you need a cigar and a little <laughs> less hair. <laughs> You'd be a Jewish banker. <laughs> That's right, Jim. The thing in the bomb goes into the doohickey and you get stuff out. Yeah, right. that's it. Yeah, that's how I poor Grim, and and that's probably what it sounds like when I talk to the computer. <laughs> so I'm I'm talking to a coder. It's like you know, like the jokes they make about take a woman taking a car to the you know, to the auto repair. Well, lady, you're gonna need your muffler bearing replaced. In a, <laughs> what muffler bearing? You, oh, and they're they're very expensive now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because there's no such thing as a yeah. muffler bearing. You have to order them from the moon base. Exactly. And there's <laughs> lots of gullible people out there in the world that suffer the wrath of a greedy Jew at work. Yeah. So I was only kidding. You don't look like a Jew banker, Larry. You don't see me from the side. You ain't seen my <laughs> nose yet. <laughs> I have a screw jump for a nose. Ah, uh, you got a good sense of humor, too. <laughs> well, yeah. today I was out in town having a few beers and uh, had an opportunity to talk to a guy that he works off on the, these rigs and comes into town for a couple months, then he goes away for a couple months, comes back, and he says, yeah, I've seen you sitting over there. And at first I thought you was like some kind of strange hippie. <laughs> but... Now that I talk to you, <laughs> I know I, it's true. He says, well, you're strange, but it's not about how you look. <laughs> so that was fun. Yeah. He's all short haired and, you know, he's in comfortable clothes, T-shirt and jeans, but brand new stuff. You know, he looks comfortable and he's playing the gambling machine and chatting with me, buying everybody a beer. Just, life here is so opposite of what I hear. It just breaks me up. Over here, if you smile at somebody and say, what are you looking at? Oh, come on. You are exaggerating a little bit, right? Just a little bit, but not Okay, bad. but it's pretty bad. Wow. Well, no, they've come to their senses here long back. and You know, they're getting their retail thing sorted out, and they haven't slapped us with any uh, raised prices yet because of cut lines or anything like that. So I don't know what they're going to do in the future. You know what? That made me think of something. What? You know, if okay. Some, if this whole mass thing keeps going, there's going to come a time when people aren't going to know what a fucking smile looks like. I think that's the goal. Yeah. I know. You know, with, that's with the... Vision, but, I mean, really... With, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, yeah, no, I'm just rambling. <laughs> we all are. Go on, Larry. With, with the... The medical secrecy stuff where nobody can figure out what you got. All you got to say is, I cannot wear the mask for medical reasons. Yep. And then they can't ask you personally what those reasons are because of other laws. That's protected so, that's information. That's what I mean. It, the things that are protected are selective. Mm -hmm. no, no matter what answer you seem to want, you can find it if you dig hard enough. But if 95% of the people just listen to the news and people that tell them what, what they heard on the news, they'll never hear the truth. Poor girl. That's right. Well, if they keep us all separated and you can't communicate with anyone, you can't touch them, but you can't work, go, you can't this, you can't, 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 how are you ever going to find out you're being fucked? They're going to tell you you can't have your kids next. Wow. Yeah, like Wow. Be like China. I, came, I came from a family that was not hugging, that didn't do the physical affection thing. So, unless it was disciplinary, my father never touched me once in his whole life. Wow. We're, I know. Yeah. I, I was a girl. girl I, I know. I, I didn't do that to my own kids, but because they did it to me, I, I know where it leads your mind and how you can kind of go too far with stay the fuck away from me. Because that's what you, I was indoctrinated with. Yeah, don't touch me. 
you know. And I'm still to the point. I'm kind of hey, get the fuck away. You're too close. <laughs> <laughs> Back off. <laughs> but on the other hand, seeing all this disaster from the uh, laws, uh, they're not even laws. All these commands from government all over the planet for their people to save them. I figured out, wow, that will not work. You're going to have a bunch of crazy fucking angry pricks at the end of this game. Yep, that's what they want. And and that's I'm what they got. One of them. Why? They want everybody all pinned up and pissed off. Yeah. Cause but you're one of them. Because then they can start the... the Revolution. Oh, it looks like they're pushing for that. Yeah, they want gunfire. Now I see. I seen a link today about uh, what do you call it? Girls. The Antifa people or BML, the BLM, Black Lives Matter people, right? And they're all land management. Yeah, that too. But <laughs> supposedly, there's a uh, a sitting state senator taking video of this group. And you see this big girl just start running towards yeah. him, and the next thing, the camera goes out. Now, I don't know if it was really who they claim it was holding the camera, but they're trying to rile people up by, per, you know, it was it. Maybe it was planned. Maybe it was a performance. And they just tell us what we want to hear. So you get the right level of pissed off and anger and keep them, you know, keep them down. Yeah. Before long, they're going to piss off the folks that just want to be left alone, and then they're going to be in trouble. Okay. That would be you guys. You know what, you know what BLM really stands for? Um, what? No. Bolshevik-led movement. <laughs> yeah. 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 Probably, yeah. <laughs> Bolshevik-led movement. Wow. That's all that's Damn, all right. Rob. That I know. Mm. You know, for just a little speck on Earth, we sure fuck things up pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even if you could, if you put us all together in one piece of land, on the planet, whatever the planet is, it's still a speck. It's not very many people. The way they talk is like, there's so many of us, we're elbow to elbow and we can't breathe. And the reality of it is, seven families own everything. <laughs> yeah. And we go along with this fucking... Stupidity, I call it that. I will always call it that. And nobody can find a way to stop it and reset it. So they're going to try violence. <laughs> that got us here. So, nah, it ain't going to work. You know, if humanity went extinct today, for whatever reason, in a hundred years, the earth would be a jungle. Probably, yeah. Life would go on and without us. Yeah. yeah. In a thousand years, most signs of humanity would be gone. Yep. Right. But they lie and they tell you, look, this is the past, and then we're going to tell you all about it, like the pyramids. And they don't tell us the truth. They tell us parts of the truth and leave key important ideas just away or bury them. Or if you bring them up, shut you down so you can't speak. Yeah. And I think all this stuff leads us to the problems with masks. Right now, of course, if you do any internet searching, you'll find out that they made the slaves wear masks in past days to identify them in public, so that people would know that ah, that's a slave. It can't speak. It has no opinion. It just does shit. Yep. Yep. Kind of like we're turning out to be in the long run. You know, nobody wants to hear us. They just want to tell us what to do and see it get done. Yeah. What? My lazy bone does not go well with uh, orders. Uh uh. I don't know why. I'm just not compliant. I'll do most anything anybody asks me to do, but when you tell me to do something, I buck. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how are you handling the mask thing, Larry? Rob kind of made it clear. <laughs> <laughs> I do not and will not wear a mask. Period. Boom. Mm -hmm. It's over. Mm hmm. Uh, Plus, if they harass you, you know what to say to them, right? Yeah. I have well, a medical yeah. condition. Well, what if you get one of those idiot cops that doesn't hear your voice, just does his job? Then he's dead. Okay. I understand that. Hmm. <laughs> so push has come to shove, and, and the system has actually made one of the nicest people I know 
violent in mind. Not indeed, but you're preparing yourself for it. Oh. Um, that, I, I will not accept tyranny, period. Go ahead and kill me. If it's, if it's be like me or die, kill me. Wow. Get it over with. Yeah. Yeah, I see in my, in word I think I'm I'm at that level. And uh then I got first to think about so it's easy to, for me to talk a big game where I'm living cuz there's no threat. Then again, if I was home I'd be a completely different person. You know, I wouldn't be so, uh, so nice about any of this shit in person. <laughs> so, either I'd be in trouble or like yourself, you know, gone. Uh, I, I, I'm just imagining because I haven't been home in so long. I refuse to participate. It has nothing to do with me. I haven't had a cold or the flu since I was a teenager. It has nothing to do with me. I'm not afraid of it, and I will not show my fear in public. Or anywhere else. Or anywhere else, yeah. Wow. Well, that <clears throat> I would take it because you know how to control the wavelength, too. That must help some. Graham's got it. BLM. Because I've, I've like tried me. that. What? Graham's got what? BLM. Be like no. me. Be like me. <laughs> yeah, be like me. Very. Uh, no. I like that. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That or works. like me. Or else. So outside <laughs> of the prices going up and... Uh, a little hysteria about masks. Is there anything solid to say that good or bad about all this in the neighborhood you live in? I, I mean, all I've got is reading internet sites because it's not happening here. So I don't really know from yeah. knowing. The I just know from reading. The only thing going on here is, like I said, the whole mask thing in restaurants, mm. which is the dumbest yeah, fucking thing I've ever heard of. You wear, you, yeah, you have to wear a mask to enter until you sit down and get a drink. Yeah. What the fuck? Is that what? Thing? Yeah. That well, doesn't mean you know. And here you don't yeah. have to wear a mask to go in, but all the waitresses have yeah. masks on. And if you look back in the kitchen, none of them have it on. And we had a waitress that had one glove on and one glove off. So, <laughs> yeah. what the fuck? Well, well, that's, that's, that's typical. Wow. People. Wow. So they're just making everybody dance a certain yeah. dance in a certain place. Okay, well, I read that it, it was split up between Republican and Democrat. The Republican state governors aren't going for this thing, and the Democrat state governors are. That's about the way it is. It kind of breaks wow. down that way. For general. Wow. Yeah. So, so it's not, how could it not be obvious then? that they've made a political thing out of this mass crap. Just uh, I see it. It is obvious. Anybody with two brain cells to rub together. Uh, but yeah. the, flocks, the flocks pay attention to what they're told on TV. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you it's really, you truly hear sad. It on TV. Wow. You don't hear about the well, study that says wearing a mask for extended periods of time lowers your blood oxygen levels. Yeah. You don't hear that part. About that. They don't talk about that. That's no, what I love about not. it. You know, we're wearing that mask for longer than 20 minutes lowers your blood oxygen level by 10%. Wow. No. Which actually, which actually reduces your body's ability, your immune system's ability to fight off disease. Hmm. And so the mask is 100% counterproductive for people that have to wear it all day, like waitresses and people are working in grocery yeah. stores and yeah. everywhere. Well, you know what? I found out last night, I found out that I'm dangerous to myself and others, even if I don't wear a mask and gloves. Well, you've always been dangerous to yourself and others. Yeah, but I've been, what do you call it? Uh, I've been accident-free pretty much since we, well, we got here the first night we were here, I had a little trip. But since then, I haven't slipped or fallen or anything. I've been really proud of my old age, right? Do you have a bulletin well, board? Do you got the numbers that flip over? No, but I last night I was making a, a was making a pot of water for tea. <laughs> and you know how the those electrical fuckers, they click and then this thing comes out the top? 
it doesn't flow out to well anyway just as i'm putting this thing behind the kettle it goes off on my arm oh shit yeah so i need to put the thing down i can't just drop it and make a big mess so i put it down pull my hand out and uh, i got which degree does this look like to you sir i don't know it's not real serious Is it but it's true? about size of a silver dollar but not quite round Is it, is and it blistering? Uh, it's showing a little blister in the center right now, but th it doesn't hurt to the touch. The reason I brought this up is I've been telling these people at the bar for years that I don't fall, you know, I don't go along with medicine. I don't, you know, go to doctors. If something happens critical, that's different. But yeah. I take care of my own little mishaps. So I went to the bar today, and if you see seen my arm, it looks like holy fuck. It, but I can touch it with my hands. You know, with my hand and shit. So it's not a serious burn, but it looks ugly. And I told her, I said, see, I didn't you, I didn't go to the doctor. Look at me. I can touch it. I'm not crying and screaming in pain. If it was serious, I would seek uh, something on the Internet to figure out what to put on it. <laughs> Aloe vera. Yeah. Exactly. But the point is, is that I tell these people these stories, and then when I get a chance to prove it, they're not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I expected, like, shock. Oh, hey, you aren't lying about that. You didn't go to the doctor, did you? Look at that. That looks pretty bad. She just kind of, yeah, okay. But I've been told stories by people in bars my whole life. Half of them are true and half of them aren't. Yeah. So the fun part for me has been wading through the mystery of it all. And I got to live one, so it was fun. Long Frog has I mean, a comment. Oh, well, it's a small thing, but, I mean, you know, yeah. a lot of people exaggerate. Yeah. As a deep-sea diver wearing a mask is level 10, derp, everything I was taught goes against their logic. Yep. Frog. Yeah, I'm lone frog. Yeah. Yeah. Thomas wrote it out that sentence. It's well, didn't they teach us this? In As a deep-sea diver level, wearing yeah, a but, mask is level 10, derp. Yeah, but didn't everything they teach us this kind of stuff when we were little? that doing certain things would hurt you and don't do them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and here we are in 2020 when yeah. we're supposed to be flying around and levitating and yeah. the population's wearing masks and gloves. Yeah. And afraid of each other. I, yeah. Well, I see that here a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit of the gloves and the overwashing the hands. Yeah. And those people, when I walk past them, they sneer at me. No. I really, yeah, I, I, really I want this. Prior to, well, all of these so-called epidemic pandemics that they've had over the last 10 years, um, a pet peeve of mine that I've always had is people that go to work when they're fucking sick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It pisses me straight the fuck off. I'll get up and walk out of a restaurant. If I walk in... And one of the waitresses is over there sniffling and... <laughs> 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 I'm going to walk the fuck out. I don't give a fuck. I don't care if they brought my food or what already. I'll get out and I ain't staying here. It was funny. <laughs> Send that person home. I mean, goddamn, think about it. You're spreading disease. Yep. You know what we need right now to, to lighten the mood, though? A beer? A a fish, you know, Matt, how about a fishing report so Rob can get a little comfort for <laughs> it? Fishing report. There you That's go. More bubbler. But yeah, fishing we, we We went last uh, Saturday and caught, well, no, let me rephrase that. My buddy got four into the boat and I got five into the boat because I won't leave until I win. <laughs> but we had a whole bunch of bites. If if we'd have got them all in the boat, there'd have been probably thirty fish in the boat. It was a wonderful day. Uh, in between storms, overcast, the wind just barely blew, just fast enough to move you gently down the shoreline that you wanted to fish. It was perfect day. So, yeah, get out and go fishing. Don't let them keep you in your house. It, this isolation crap, be isolated in a boat on a lake. <laughs> Look at nature. See the beautiful things. 
there were osprey and all different kinds of birds and the turkey were talking and it it was a beautiful day out. That's what life's all about, man. Yeah. Yes, you're trying to take that all away from everybody. Yeah. That's where the punishments were, were I was reading come in. If you're alone out in the park or the woods, they arrest you. Why? Yeah. But you did go to the beach and join a crowd of people under. burning down buildings and tearing down statues. That's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. How do you feel about that one? Larry's been kind of quiet today. We've been over. We've been drowning him out. What do you feel about the statue thing? Because you got a lot invested in history more than us, me and Rob. I think because well, you've been around longer. I'm proud of my southern heritage, and the rebel flag to me doesn't mean I want to have a slave. Although I think that would be kind of handy a lot of times. <laughs> uh, you know, every, every, everybody needs a slave once in a while, but... Uh, Voluntary is... Well, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's plumb ridiculous. You cannot change history by tearing down a statue. Not only that, it's against the law. I'm all for protesting peacefully. That means keep your ass on the fucking sidewalk. Don't block <laughs> traffic. Don't burn down your neighbor's store. And the the BLM burning black businesses, that is about as smart as it can get. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that's that's the white people that they hired to start the shit in the first place. Yeah. Maybe. It's all George Soros is funding yeah. it. Yeah, the real, the real dastardly shit is started by the provocateurs. Yeah. 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 Name, whatever name you use, it's it's not who we think it is in the beginning. Yeah. you got to watch it's the video. Show. It's, 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 it's somebody it's, that's hardcore, uh, whether it's paid or not, uh, being paid or having extreme, being an extremist and uh, actually believing in what they're doing. Are you proud of your Southern heritage too, Rob? No, I don't give a fuck. Okay. But Larry, all right. Well, Larry does, and I, I'm all for preserving the the history in physical form. I don't think destroying it serves the purpose. I consider but, myself an uh, Earthling. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, me I too. I was born yeah. in a land that uh, they call Texas, and that's well, why I'm not a true Southerner. Huh? Yeah. See, that's yeah. That's why I thought Larry would have a more uh, a deeper con uh, attachment to it than you because of his age, for one. He grew yeah. up in a different... He grew up before us. Yeah. I and mean, after him. I grew up in a time where my grandfather was the mayor of Milton, Florida. Milton, Florida has a river on one edge of town. The black folks lived on the other side of the river. There was a sidewalk on the white side of the river, right next to the river. Black folks could get on that sidewalk. Across the street from that sidewalk were the businesses. A black person could walk across the road and go to a specific business, but they could not walk along in front of the business. Hang on, Larry. Um, my sound just went... Oh, yeah, I, I, I have certain, are y'all getting out of it? How about now? Right, yeah. Yeah. much there. better. Yeah. Every once in a while, my sound does that. I don't, I don't know what causes it. It just... Cheap goes. internet suppliers. No, I don't <laughs> yeah. think it's the internet, because it... All uh, right, well, it, you know it what? It only does it. I thought about it. Actually, we, were, we were debating that the other day about the YouTube shit, you know, where you play a, a link and it sounds like shit on a good stereo. Yeah. And I brought up maybe there, maybe there's a, they're just doing the minimum so we get a bad, re, you know, you get bad reception on purpose because they're not doing their full job on the delivery. I think it the might have something to do with the wire. Um, it's the only thing it does it in. Um, anyway, Larry, you, you, we're you, back. Okay. You were oh, telling a story about, uh, there being a sidewalk next to the river and the black yeah. people could yeah. walk on oh. that sidewalk and yeah, the street, and then I, it went, it went staticky, so. 
Yeah, yeah the, the black you. oaks had to stay on the river side of the road uh-huh. and could only cross the road if they were going into one of the businesses. Uh-huh. Once they got inside the business, they couldn't walk on the sidewalk on the business side. They had to go back across the road. Uh-huh. And But once they got inside, if they had a restroom at all for black people, it was men and women both in the same restroom. Uh-huh. If there was a drinking fountain at all for a black person, it said black only. Uh-huh. So it, it's a whole different world. Uh, back then, if a black person didn't say yes sir or no sir to you, he got a visit by the Klan. Yeah. So it it was a, it's a whole different world now, uh, and believe me, I am prejudiced. I am prejudiced. I hate everybody equally. We're all <laughs> idiots. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're all idiots. But if you prove to me that you're a good person, I'm going to be a good person back to you. If you prove to me that you're an asshole, boy, how they look out. Yeah, yeah. I see that. Because you got 72 years of practice. (laughs) Absolutely. I'm nine years old now, and I can get away with anything I want to. I'm too old to be politically correct. That upbringing you had... Is it was gone before I was old enough to even know it existed. My you know, I came in, growing up on the tail end of all that segregation shit, and what the reason I brought this up is now it seems this the Black Lives Matter thing is all about is making us all segregate again. Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. Well, I was, was, was going to say, if you with just people. turn that around, and look at it from another perspective. The black only water fountain. It seems like, oh, so they're special. They get their own water fountain. Everybody else mm-hmm. It's all a it. matter of perspective. It's all a matter of how like you're looking at it. Yeah. How they sell it to you in the public exactly. eye is how you accept it as a collective, I think. Wow. And then there's uh, us, on, whatever we on are. The subject of slavery <laughs> in and of itself, every race, species, or, or sect, uh, color, has been made slaves in the past. Oh yeah. Oh, every definitely. every every race has been subjected to slavery. Um, a lot of the slaves that were brought over here from Africa were sold into slavery by black African rival tribes. Well, that Africa still owns slaves. They still have slaves. The slave, yeah. slavery I, is a thriving trade. I mean, go to Libya. There were in the beginning of this country. Slavery. There were more black, or there were excuse me, there were more Irish slaves than there were black slaves. Yeah, the Irish folks the bread yeah. There were also black slave owners. Yeah. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of the big, biggest uh, black slave owners or slave owners were black. Um, and another thing, the majority yeah. of people didn't own slaves. Uh, owning a slave, <laughs> right? Owning a slave was a was a rich man's <laughs> gig, you know. You and now every money. banker can yeah, do have money. That's you know that's like having a, a you know a, a freaking robot that. Does your bidding. Does your sure. bidding, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, we, we don't even have that. Well, yeah, we do in a way. Not exactly, but yeah. Well, yeah, they but do the it with finance. Is, is, you know, how many people today in any given group in a room will, will raise their hand if you ask the question, uh, how many people in here own slaves? <laughs> No. Uh, like you're not going to get any hands. Okay. How many people in here have been a slave? <laughs> that depends. That That's kind of a subjective thing, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, well, you, you got to when I, you gotta when I've had, it out. That's, I, that's the specifics. But financial responsibility to me makes me feel like a slave. Well, that's, that, that's my next point is. Yeah. Now, if you're, if you're not a slave... 
And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna. My next point after that is gonna be, okay, you're all a bunch of fucking liars because every single <laughs> damn one of you is a slave. Okay, because uh, slavery is when another man can take the fruits of your labor and call them his own. Yep, we are now free willing to a, a, a cut and dry definition of slavery. I mean, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Larry okay. summed it up. So if you if you if anybody can take the fruits of your labor, then you're a slave, and call it legitimate. Right yeah. now, I suppose. So how many people in this fucking room are not slaves? I'm raising my hand. You're not one. No. Okay. Well, I I couldn't say that. Nobody takes the fruit of, fruits of my labor, mainly because I don't. Labor anymore. Well, I, I'm a willing slave. I got married, Rob. Well, that kind of limits my freedom. Another bag of uh, of uh, scorpions. But uh, yeah, yeah. See, it's all a matter of how you see your life. I would yeah. suppose. Yeah. If you're happy with what you got, then then it is what it is. Yeah, you bitch less. I think. Yeah. Well, now I'm Jewish. I complain. But the whole about point it. is, 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 and, and this this. Uh, uh, line of thinking has been gone over ad nauseum as far as uh, the premise that the 14th Amendment didn't free anybody, it made everybody slaves. That that quote, you can find that quote, people have said that many times. Yeah, but they buried the 14th. It's hard to find. You find links of it now. What? No, you're talking the, about the original 13th. 13th. Well, there's a missing, the there's a, a missing the, the one, the thirteenth is the the one that there's a keep lawyers there's out. a controversy over. There's a missing thirteenth amendment. They, they passed the thirteenth amendment outlawing uh, banning uh, titles of nobility and yeah, that uh, one. Which number is this? Um, it was the thirteenth, uh, and yeah. then they changed that to be the uh, prohibition on involuntary servitude. The, the the one you see now when you go look up the Thirteenth Amendment is uh, involuntary servitude is prohibited. Yet we still do it. That's not involuntary though. People are volunteering. Well, They're volunteering. They just don't know it. They don't understand. Well, it yeah, because they sign contracts. They can't understand. Sorcery. They've they've tricked everybody into believing that they're a U.S. citizen. But you're not. Yeah. You're not a fucking yeah. U.S. citizen. You don't live in Washington D.C. <laughs> it's it's so different to hear you say it than to read it. You know. You, yeah, I know. Believe me, I, I know. mean, and I don't even. I don't even. I don't even recognize that. Like I was saying earlier, I was born in a in a in an area of land that is designated as as the state of Texas by some people. But mm -hmm. I I don't call, consider myself a Texan. I consider myself a man, an Earthling, a human, whatever mm -hmm. you know. And but mm -hmm. when you do that, you're you're accepting a political classification. Yeah. When you call yourself a Texan, when you call yourself a, a Mexican or a U.S. citizen, which is on every yeah. freaking form, that's how they trick you. When you claim to be a U.S. citizen, you, you, take you just gave it all away. All yeah. shit right there, man. <laughs> so, well, yeah. But see, we're not taught to read the contract and understand what we're signing. They don't even show you the contract. They just, it's just an adhesion uh, nexus is what it's called. But uh, Well, when I first signed for my driver's license when I was, mm -hmm. you know, turning 16, I was all excited. I could do this without being uh, worried about being arrested, finally. Because <laughs> yeah. before that, I just drove the car without a license. It didn't bother me. But yeah. it bothered everybody else. Yeah. So I went, okay, I'll go do the thing legal and make everybody happy. Yeah. And what I learned, like, 10 years later was the power of my signature through that, having other people explain to me what I really did. Said you're not driving anything, boy. What? No, you're you're just traveling. What? <laughs> I was so confused. Plus well, drinking, I, so I, it took me a while. I have I have uh, studied that for ten years. 
the right. laws and the, and the traffic and stuff. And uh, uh, well, you remember the show I did with Eddie? Oh yeah. And uh, um, so I, I understand that I haven't had a license since 2007. Yeah. Um, and the only reason I got that one was so I could fly one time. Yeah, so they I trap you with all kinds of crap. Which, yeah, which I since refuse to do anymore. So oh, you know, and in, in, in your guys' honor tonight, I'm doing the show without pants. Yeah. Yay! I'm sitting oh, here in my drawers and a t-shirt for dropping a call. So just in case, got to drop a call. Thursday. <laughs> no, it's actually it's so warm in the house. It's very rarely this warm, but it's very warm. Yeah. Wow. Well, well. Well, climate change, change is I'm, real to a point. I'm usually <laughs> naked when I do the show. So. Ah, <laughs> see, now we got to do it on video. I happen to, to, to be dressed today because I was out and about earlier. <laughs> and I have no shirt, no shoes, and then shorts. Wow, we're three dirty old men on the same show. Yeah, that's yeah. right, guys. I, Hey, we might be we might be making history. <laughs> no, we'd have to be in the same room to do that right now. <laughs> Wait a minute. You can't you can't uh what do you call it? You gotta have your social distancing. <laughs> I think we're we're doing just fine. <laughs> yeah, we're okay. My my dad used to say I have a face for radio anyhow. So. <laughs> yeah. Me and my daddy, we got along great especially when he was at work. <laughs> and it's something, you, you, all these people on this planet, and we've all been through the same shit in different ways. But it's all the same. It's weird. I mean, maybe that's just my opinion, but I think that defeat and, and problems are a matter of how you take them. You know, you can give two different people the exact same problem and you come out with two different responses. But the, it's yeah. the same action done to him. And, well, it's just weird how we all see the differences in each other because we, we look different. But deep down inside or whatever you call that, we're a bunch of electrical shit bouncing off each other. Learn how to understand that, and the game gets easier, yep. I think. Well, I heard a guy tell me today, and I was kind of upset with him, but I was talking to this guy at the bar, and he does not like black people at all. He was very uh, definite about it. He used colorful language to describe his opinion. And I just was like, okay. I didn't want to argue with him. But he wasn't going to have, hey, they're people too. No, they're not. I'm like, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my yeah. family was like that. You know, they got hurt by a, my <clears throat> grandmother got uh, a chain snatched once on, in L.A. So after that, all black people were horrible because one black kid snatched a chain off her throat. Yes. But she could never find a, a, a problem with the Jew. <laughs> <laughs> it was ironic. Oh, yeah. I mean, she, I grew up and, and into my 50s, I listened to my mother and my grandma, you know, my family, tell me how horrible the Muslims were. Yeah. Oh, those people are so bad, blah, 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 blah. And every time I had a personal interaction with somebody that said openly, I'm Muslim, no trouble ever. Yeah. Not once. I've never had an argument. I've never been in a fight with a Muslim. But Jews, well, they're I sneaky. Think you think you too? Not all of us. I don't know. This usury thing, taking advantage of the world with this is wrong. But it's legal. You know, it's unethical. It's immoral. Like back in my contracting days when I was doing construction and stuff, mm -hmm. yeah. if the guy I was working for, getting work from, uh, told me they were a Christian, I immediately asked for half my money up front. Wow. Yeah, really. I, uh, in all my dealings, with, in all my days of contracting, uh, the only pe only time I ever got burnt was when dealing with an open op somebody that was openly Christian. You know the type. Pretty much, uh, I've seen. Those people will stab you in the back quicker than anybody. Hmm. 
Because no, but they're holy they're on just Sunday. Whatever you do, now. wrong them, wrong God. So they're justified <laughs> in doing whatever the fuck they need to. <laughs> uh, see, it, I think it's just all all the religions are uh, the yeah. leaders of them. They all, all get right. along just fine, and the, they make sure that the people that participate are at each other's throat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My God's better than your God. <laughs> Out of over 5,000 practices in the world today, only my God is right. That's right. Okay. And don't forget because it. your God has a bigger dick than my God. Okay, you win. I don't know. It's all insanity to me. Uh, we were we did discuss this, though. This other fellow was telling me that... The way life is right now, they take you out of the moment you're in, because I've said this myself. They take, take you out of the moment you're in and want you in the future or the past, but not in, in the where you're at. And I went, wow, <laughs> okay, I know that. But it was different for him to tell me instead of me telling him. So I'm, I'm finding balance in life as well as non-balance in the same conversation. Yeah. Well... I think the radio has taught me how to listen a little more closely than I used to once. Because it's hard as fuck to listen on the radio when you're live. Because you got your own ideas, and you're going to say this, and you're going to do that. Yeah. And then the other guy's doing the same thing. So we end up not really connecting on the radio. And then you listen back and find, hey, we did make sense. <laughs> but when it's no going way. on for me, this is just chaos. Okay. Let's get serious. Larry. Okay. What's up? Larry. Serious alert. Serious How was alert. the Monday meeting? Oh, yeah, the Monday meeting. I forgot oh, about it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, Monday meeting, we have now got guys winding the flat coil. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, that... Cool. I'm, I'm a little bit prejudiced about that one. That's my favorite coil Yeah. Uh, so far. But uh, we've got them winding it, and I, uh, what's the name? It's not Purdue. What, what's the prestigious university in London? Oxford. One, another one. Starts mm -hmm. with A. Uh, Cambridge. 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 That's the yeah. C. Yeah. Okay, oh. Cambridge. All right. The, uh, the head of the engineering, electrical, and electronic engineering department at Cambridge is part of the group. Oh, shit. Yeah. And he is the one that just started winding the flat coil. We've been working with him almost on a daily basis, replacing the parts of his electronic circuit with coil windings. Uh, a capacitor is simply one or more circuits in the coil that are shorted out. Uh, a MOSFET is four circuits that are wired together in a specific way. Uh, MOSFET is a transistor that does more than one thing at one time. That's all. Uh, oh, transistor. So, yeah, transistor. So the transistors and MOSFETs and capacitors are out of the way. Any coil, any circuit in this coil can be a resistor. There are also transformers. So now the whole gambit, other than the CPU, is controlled. Through frequency at 12 volts, they get 300 volts out. The the uh, professor has got uh, 20 40 watt light bulbs all lit off this circuit, and the neutral goes back into the neutral wire of the circuit of the coil, and that loops the system. So it actually wants more lights. It wants more load. It's amazing. Uh, well, it's a closed-loop um, system that works yeah. better the more you put in it. Yeah. Yeah, just exactly. 
uh, and I'm really, really impressed with the with the group that we're working with. Uh, every one of those guys knows a shitload more than me. It, it's really nice to, to have people that finally understand what I'm trying to talk about. And we just learned to manipulate the magnetic field. That's all we've done. And it's oh. all in the different geometries of the coil. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's all, Larry. Yeah, yeah sure. that's all. It's only no big deal. It's just break through technology. No, no big deal. And, and I finally got them to understand that electricity is not three things. It's not volts, amps, and ohms. Those are parts of it, but you've got to add frequency and magnetism into that to get the real picture. What's the, uh, wow. what's the uh, measure of magnetism? Uh, Goss. Goss. So it's volts, amps, ohms, Goss, and frequency. Yeah. Or hertz. Or hertz. That's what I meant to say. Or cycles. Yeah. Uh, and uh, oddly enough, the frequency that that is producing this 300 volts is 96 kilohertz, which is a C. That's one, uh, six. That's one of the three, six, and nine. So three, six, and nine are the sweet spots in this kind of equipment, just because of the toroidal shape. And nine is the number of wraps to a winding, right? To a circuit. So it it and it needs to be for the geometry of the of the toroidal coil that's in the two three eight ratio, so that you can fill up the center of it exactly and have the gaps on the outside edge right uh, and the folks that want to wind one I'll give you the I'll give you a, a okay first of all <laughs> any any generator gives you DC period that's the way the world is now well not anymore one style coil that we've got gives you AC without movement. You've got to move a magnet past the conductor in order to generate electricity or conductor past the magnet. That no longer is real. With a static haulback array in the vortex of a spiral coil that produces 12 volts AC because of the frequency, the resonation of the magnetic field resonating in harmony with the subatomic frequency of the copper sets up a charge. You can't see it moving, but it is on a subatomic level, just like an atom never stops moving. Right. Okay. In order to make one of these spiral coils, Start at the outside equator, uh, we'll call it zero or 360 degrees. The dead center of the outside equator make three complete spirals to get down into the center of the coil, and then three spirals on the back side in order to get back to where you started. You have two circuits that touch one another. One circuit goes one direction clockwise. The other circuit goes anti-clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on what country you're in. That uh, also, there is no such thing as polarity in a coil. That comes from how you hook it up. The polarity is in the wire. Wire stretched out of a machine has one polarity. When you turn that wire end for end and wrap it, you have a different polarity. So the wire on the clockwise circuit goes on how you pull it off the coil, off the spool, 
and the wire on the counterclockwise, you pull it off, cut it off, and turn it in for end, and then wrap your circuit. So it makes a lot of difference, the polarity of the wire, only in the magnitude of the electric and electromagnetic fields. And that happens That's all you want to know. And that happens because during the extrusion process, which uh, it, exactly if you understand it, how wire. If you understand how wire is made, um, mm. uh, copper is melted down, put into a hopper, and forced through a nozzle. Yeah, and cooled as it comes out the nozzle, so that it solidifies. And so, as that molten copper is in this process, the molecules of that mo of the copper get aligned as it's pushed through this nozzle. They, they, they line up yep. in a certain direction. And so when, you, when you're pulling out or pushing that wire out, everything lines up. And so everyone's, all the molecules of, or atoms of copper are lined up in a certain direction so that the polarity of the actual atoms is, is tends to face one direction. Right. And, that, and that's why when you flip the wire in from in, you get a different polarity. Yep, just exactly. So now you can make a coil that will give you 12 volts AC to ground. Hmm. And wow. that's, that's by hooking it up in series. Hook the entire coil up in series. You have an output only. There's only two wires that you end up with. Those will give you 12 volts between them. AC. Oh, you guys are so smart. You know, I got schooled by my wife today about copper. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> really? How, well, I'm a, I, I think I've got a, a something stuck in my head. But, well, what happened is I've got a little greenhouse, and I'm growing a few plants in there. So every day I pay attention to it. I go out there in the morning. And I found a slug. <laughs> okay? So I've had all these ideas, and we she's built stuff in the backyard to stop the slugs from getting her vegetables. So I figured, well, we'll just do that with mine. And she says, no, use copper. And I thought, oh, yeah, I'm going to go out of my way to buy a bunch of copper wire. To, no, stupid, use copper tape. Went, what? <laughs> So my wife schools me today on <laughs> copper tape. Wait, I mean, you know, I'm so out of touch with stuff. <laughs> I don't, and maybe it was simple to you, but wow, to me it was like, wait a minute. So I, I come out of it thinking, why don't I think of things like this? I work with, you know, people on the radio that do this shit, and I don't learn enough. <laughs> well, I sort of need a funnel. Do I have a what? Funnel? Oh, yeah, I could get a funnel. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a coat hanger that's metal? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Wrap that coat hanger around that funnel. Leave a long end on the pointy part and a long end sticking straight up. Yeah. Take that funnel out of it. Poke that pointy part down into the ground, just the wire that's going straight off that, mm -hmm. so that your coil sits straight up with a sort of like an antenna sticking out. Yeah, yeah I got the idea. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just put that in your garden. It won't keep the bugs away, but it'll make your plants grow better. Really? Do not, do not attach that in any way to the metal casing that you put around your tomato plants to help them stay up. Because uh, she's she, she, yeah, she's using wood for the for this uh, excellent. Yeah, so all you all there, you yeah. got all you got to do is put that somewhere in your garden that'll cover a space about twenty foot around. No way. Yeah. So it doesn't even have to be in the garden itself. It's just got to be within that range to work. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And I didn't just, wow. See, just stick the pointy end into the ground. Mm -hmm. What that makes is a receiver. Yeah. And and you're you're receiving the earth frequency, the earth electric charge through that and amplifying it. Wow. 
Okay, and it's just a regular wire coat hanger just made out of whatever that's made out of? Anything that's conductive, yes. Oh, Oh, wow, okay. Thanks, Larry. I'm going to try that in the morning. Yeah. Because you can use anything to make that that coil shape, anything, you know, that's small in the bottom. I'll find some, a bottle or bundle or something, but I'm just saying it's an easy, wow, that was an easy fix. But I didn't know that it would help the, wow, because it changes the vibration or uh, the frequency. It adds, yeah, the frequency too, but it adds a little bit of an electrical charge to the ground. Uh, It stimulates the roots. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah, because I've learned about that, uh, feeding the roots with, you know, I get extra, like, plant food, and and it works. She's, um, she's got a tomato plant right next to my, my greenhouse thing in, a like, a round thing, and it's just freaking huge. Yeah. I think that the stalks are about um, the size of a, I don't know, maybe a, a, a nickel. They are, you know, round. They're huge. I've never seen anything grow like this out of the yard so far till now. So with our, you know, all the input we get from Internet and friends and whatnot, we have succeeded in our little do quest to grow a few Do you things. have a small radio that will do a CD or MP3? I don't think so, but there's a thrift store in town, and there's Internet to buy this stuff. Up, cheap, but yeah. What tone would be good for uh, plants? Do you know, Larry? Oh, will you play a music? Yeah, or, I'm, or I'm not tone? sure what tone is good for plants, but I do know that E, the musical note E, makes fish feed. Wow. Well, yeah, because the vibration would make your instincts work, right? Yeah, it's just like they're going to yeah. control you with the 5G. They're going to send the frequency out. And you're going to want to eat, you're going to want to sleep, you're going to want to say yes, wow. you're going to lay down and roll over. There you go, Flash. Wow, I'm not looking forward to that. Oh, you put it in our on? Or the yeah. wire? No, I'm hours of music, music for plants. Healthy group plants. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get a copy of that. That's just the you want it in the thing. notes, too? That's just the first thing I picked up. Uh, sure, I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, there's, that's that's been known for a long time that... Uh, of course, everybody's heard, you know, talk to your plants. Uh, talking to your plants helps. Uh, helps yeah, I do that. Better, uh, people laugh about it. Yeah. Uh, I think it has more more to do with the carbon dioxide you're breathing onto them. Than, uh, oh. But, it, it, I, you know, if you talk lovingly to your plants, it's like the, the whole water experiment with the Japanese guy, you know. You project yeah. light into water and, and uh, freeze it, and it makes these nice, beautiful crystals. And you, or love, yeah. But you know, the breathe on it thing. You know, we've talked about it. So right, but in, my my plants are in a greenhouse. Yeah. With a cover on it, a see-through plastic cover, right? Just a yeah. little experimental kind of thing. Uh-huh. And I I do my talking outside. Mm. When I when I do, you know, because well, my wife thinks it's a little strange, and I got some She's favorites in the front window of the house that faces the street, and yeah. I water them every morning, and and I talk to them like they're alive. <laughs> yeah. So it must seem pretty weird to some people until they get used to me, but yeah. I believe that you know if you treat something like shit, it will be shit. If you yeah. treat something good, it will be good. Everything it's, is a vibration. Everything is a frequency. Yeah, well, we create our own lives, but we're told it's in control. Okay, but like you were complaining about the mask thing. Mm-hmm. See, we create, we, I believe we, by where we are, we create our own life, our own reality. Right. And then these other people try to come in and interfere with you by making it good for everybody. And that's a bunch of shit. They're, they're not doing that at all, but that's the story they tell. Yeah. And the less intelligent among us, Let's say the weaker, the fragile, they listen to the promise and, oh, I'm going to wear a mask and be saved, for example, when the rest of us know fucking good and well that's not true, yet the lie is always the thing that gets um, followed or acted out. So it seems. Well, I don't know about seems. 
it feels real to me when I encounter when I encounter you guys telling me about the haircut doubling in price. These things are ah, yeah. Come on, guys. Six we all got fucked, baby. but how can you fuck me more after you got fucked? Where's your Where's your humanity at? Yeah. So yeah, I've been lucky to not get sucked into that game so how somehow. Yeah. You know, like uh, you were complaining about things before the show a little bit. You're too happy. You seem a little better now, Rob. Yeah, well, <laughs> you, you guys put me in a better mix. Always. Yeah, you started out a little grumbly. Yeah. Talking to like minds which tends to take the edge off a lot for me. True. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, you know, to be, to sit with somebody that's like today for me, so intelligent in some ways and then a, a race bigot Can in another. Head, yeah. And it just, how do you judge that? I can't. I would have to be a racist to him to judge his racism. Yeah. Well, so right. what I decided Hans to do is he's probably is very it. intelligent, yet he follows the government bullshit. Or he's been hurt by some black guy on a job, or in, like my grandma. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. everybody's a product of their their, their experiences. Right, so, but you can't, we're taught to blame races for one individual's action. And it's just like, wow, how can you buy that stuff? And then go to a bank and beg for money, you know? Yeah. Because that, that's what I know, call it. Uh, yeah, there, are, there are people that have had uh, uh, time after time after time after time the same treatment from a certain class of people. And it's understandable that they believe what they believe. Well, do you, you know, do you engage it in person ever anymore, or are you isolated enough where you don't even bother with the conversation? I don't. Even, I don't talk to people. You, I talk to you. Wow. People. I talk to you people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously. Because I don't really have. We can We we have a real hard time finding friends that we can keep because we always end up. I always end disagree uh, about yeah because I as anybody that knows me knows I'm a opinionated motherfucker <laughs> and I'm not afraid to tell you what I think. Yep, just exactly what I think. You know, you know, I don't care, and I'm that way in real life. I, I'm I'm pretty much straightforward. And if you don't want to know, don't, don't ask people. me. Well, I don't even have to ask you. Uh, this morning, well, uh, something I left out of this morning, there was a couple came in, an older couple came in, they had their masks on, they sat down at their table, and they kept their masks on. I looked at them and said, get those masks off your face. Yeah. <laughs> and they looked at me like, God, I can tell. <laughs> I was like, there was summoning Satan on them or something. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, you know. I said, those things, they don't, first of all, they don't stop a virus, for one, and they're actually harmful. For wearing well, one of those yeah. for more than 20 minutes, it causes your blood oxygen level to go down 10%. Uh, and they just said, no, oh, we'll keep them on for now until we get our drink. We're going to follow the rules. Because that's the rule. You have to wear a mask until you get, get your drink. Mm. That's, yep. And then, then, the then, then they ask to let you take it off because how the fuck are you going to eat and drink with put the fucking mask on? Um, yeah. so anyways, so yeah, they just, they looked at me like I had leprosy or something. And, you know, and then of course that pissed my girlfriend off because she was embarrassed. And, oh, um, yeah. So, that. And that's what really yeah. caused the mood I was in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I care about what you she thinks, you know? Uh, yeah. yeah, everybody else. I don't get it. Really, what people think. I, I, <laughs> well, I think you do. It's just you're not sh- going to sugarcoat it to them. So though, no, I'm not done with that. Do I played that game for too, too many fucking years, man. Trying to be nice yeah. and and yeah. work it in from the side. And, you know, be be subtle. <laughs> and, and, you know, you know. Uh, you, you know. <laughs> Of course, the you're like I was all very about light. the tax thing. You know, it was all about I was I was the untaxed man. That's that was my nickname for many years. Are are, are you that harsh to people, Larry, or when you're in public? I present the attitude I wish to receive. 
Mm -hmm. And if somebody is an asshole to me, I'm an asshole to them. Well, yeah, but how do you deal with, you know, trying to help somebody else understand that wearing the mask is bad for you? Do you have a way of doing it? Rob's way is a little harsh, <laughs> but I would assume from talking to you over the years that if you got involved, it would be serious in the first place. You, would, you don't just talk randomly to know, but you, you, you're more uh, specific. Yeah, I, I educate my friends and the people that are out in public doing the stupid stuff. I look at and laugh right out loud. Okay, I lean your way to that because talk is just, I can't speak Danish. Well, but, you, you can't change the mind of an idiot. But you, but when you laugh and point at somebody, <laughs> yep. don't matter what language you speak, they get that. They get that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, you're right. I, I, you know, but that's just or me. on the way into the grocery store, they've got one of those hand uh, sanitizer dispensers, mm -hmm. and you're supposed to do. And I walk right by these people, and they look at me like, "Hey." <laughs> they don't and know you're trying to make them come back and do that. <laughs> okay, but I figure before I eat my vegetables, when I buy them and take them home, Cirque's gonna wash them. Okay, I'm not yeah. going to put any of this shit in my mouth directly from the source I got it from. It's going to go open the can, open the box, wash it, do something. So what's yeah. all the sanitizing okay. for? Yeah. Because there's shit. Every, we live in shit. We are human debris. Yeah. And we're taught you put a little makeup on and a nice uh, set of clothes and, and all of a sudden you're special. No, you're still a smoldering pot of shit walking around. You just look good. You know? Graham says, I but don't say anything to them unless they say something to me. And then it's, oh, oh yeah. Boy, you're going to get the full gamut of what's on my mind. <laughs> yep. <laughs> wow. Ain't we, a, ain't we a loving crowd? <laughs> you, you need to go out and get dirty. Yeah, some of these people need to get slapped a little bit and woke the fuck up because, yeah. I mean, how else are we going to get out of this fucking mess? No. Nope. I don't know. I wish I could help you guys, but all yeah. I've got to offer yeah. is if you told the truth and you didn't shoot people and you grew hemp like you knew what you were doing, inside of six months, this whole thing would be normal for everybody. Whatever normal means, comfortable, Yeah, there would be abundance. Yeah. But all the, all the problems are all based on stories and tales and lies and bullshit, and we just keep accepting more of it instead of fighting it. Yeah. Uh, I do have a little bit of a link, too. I don't know. Ah. Just well, I, it link? came to mind because of Moose. Moose Girls in Wisconsin. And all this hoopla started out of Minnesota. That was the home base of it, right? Mm -hmm. And it spread over to Madison, Wisconsin. So I went, wow, that's, you know, getting close, getting closer. Yeah. And uh, what happened was supposedly... They have a, a Black Lives Matter protest, and it's one of the people goes up and grabs his phone out of this guy's hand, and he's supposed to be a sitting senator, but yeah. a state senator. But I, I, it says Tim Carpenter, Democrat Milwaukee, was recovering from his many injuries by the mob. Now, is that creative writing, and they're exaggerating well, it? I think you're mixing up a couple of stories, because there was another story where they beat up a, a senator. I'm reading it right off the thing. Yeah, another story on where they grabbed the, the, the fat chick. Maybe another one. Grabbed their phone. Yeah. Yeah, that's the link I'm looking at right here. It says State Senator Tim Carpenter, Democrat, yeah. Milwaukee. There was another so one yeah. previously. Wow. 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 No, I don't know. know. Anyway, yeah, it's just crazy, man. But what I'm, what I'm getting at is because I'm a spectator on the Internet, I have a little trouble figuring out in the beginning which one really happened because some of this shit is coming out true now. In the beginning, it was all bullshit. We're all and now there's on the internet. Yeah. I mean, I'm here in Arkansas. I don't yeah. see this shit. It's quiet here. There's, there's, there's no protest or riots or anything. Other than a bunch of freaking idiots running around with masks on. I mean, following that, that, really, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. If I didn't have internet or TV or something, I wouldn't know shit was going on other than a bunch of idiots running around in masks. What the hell are these people running around using masks on for? Oh, yeah, the reason, you know, but that's the only thing I would have to everywhere. Go by. 
It just said it said Madison. I've been to Madison. I know where it, what state it's in. And I went, wow, yeah. this is where Moose is at because Eau Claire's not that far. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it might so be to somebody that lives there. I live in the place than I do. It's like, been there. Wow. wow. It's hard to believe that people are they're letting uh, they're encouraging and allowing other people to behave like this and without a shut up and sit down. I mean, that's where I grew up. Yeah. You got out of line in the seventies, and some grown up would put your fucking ass down and you shut you up. Right. Not, not encourage you. He'd give you a Molotov cocktail. Go we'll throw it at that guy sitting over there. Yeah. ADHD, I mean, ADHD was cured by sit down and pay attention. Yeah, yeah. I've seen so many horrible things on the internet in the last couple of months. It's devastating, I guess, because it's so peaceful. Like you're, where you guys are, it's no no problems, no you know, drama, and you got to go away from where you live to engage it. Yeah, and that's where the food's the at. So what do you do? You wouldn't know. Yeah, but if you you got to eat, so they got us by the nets. Yeah. See? Well, yeah, the whole, the whole uh, delivery system and dependency wow. on, on uh, factory farming. So the disappointing part for me is as it as it mellows out where I'm living and people come to terms with the truth, I see it exploding in other countries. Yeah, it's getting worse. England, they're they're talking about um, per uh, what do you call that lockdown till. Next year, they yeah. want to. They want to engage more of this. They, they've made it so they uh, they want to open the bars and the restaurants, but you have to go online and register to go to a bar or a restaurant. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> so you know, so everybody can be you know uh, uh, reservation for two. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, I don't understand how you can be so gullible to not see that you're being screwed in the butt with all this drama about COVID. But well, then I, again, I can read, I so that I've got that disadvantage. You know, I thought that well, 30 years ago when I was telling people about the tax, income tax. Mm, the whole mm. freaking income, income tax is a scam. And, and they look at you like you're nuts. Oh, yeah. Now... Being someone that's been doing this for 32 years, uh, I have seen it, uh, a change in in people's, I, I, I meet a lot more people that are not like immediately just, oh, you're bad, you're fucking crazy. Now they're like, oh, really? You know, they want to they hear a little bit more about it, you know, well, yeah. They won't necessarily go all the way and, and say, you know, they all suck <laughs> and go full-blown anarchists, but uh, they'll at least listen to me now. So oh, no, no, the way the news is, is just using that anarchy word to keep everybody afraid. They yeah. attach it to the violent shit oh, yeah. where it does they're not always, belong, and then they that. tell them. Oh, yeah. Tell the idiots what they want to hear and make it all blame, blame, blame instead of... We did this. We're sorry. We could fix it in a few days. Let us oh, yeah. do our thing. Yeah. Stop all this nonsense. Yeah. The whole no, they uh, just keep postponing it. Yeah, they're yeah. sacred cows. So you start challenging the sacred it. cows, and uh, they get all animated and shit. Have you seen that idiot Boris Johnson talking about this crap? It's uh, bad. He's the. Really he used to be the mayor of London. Now he's the prime minister. I yeah. guess the queen likes the way he rubs her feet. I don't know. So she made him. Yeah. Oh, the Queen well, takes the damn him. prime minister. I don't minister. listen to Trump. I don't listen to any of those fucking bobbleheads. Oh, it's it's fun to listen to them tell the other idiots what the other idiots want to hear because that's what he's he's pandering to the weak. Right. Yeah. I and got, I got no interest. Well, I hear what if, I don't, to say. if I don't listen to the enemy. How do I know what they said? Take, take a break and call for a minute. I did. Well, we're almost to the end. <laughs> we got 10 minutes. I'm dying of the marijuana COVID. Help, help. Yep. Eh, it's my trademark. You know, if you're going to have a gimmick, might as well be something that's fun. Right. And I like 
choking on my marijuana pipe load. <laughs> I must be a glutton because I should hit a lot softer than I do sometimes. But I'm a greedy Jew and I want my 20% and I want your 78% too. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I have to sip. Iron well, that's only 98. And hold it till no smoke comes out. <laughs> oh, the good old days. Wow. I kind of miss being young every now and again. But, you know, I accept it. But, boy, those were the good old days. I broke more laws in California than they got on paper. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But uh, I guess we, uh, we're all guilty of something now. No. There are so many laws that you're, yeah, the, if you get stopped, they can find something if they look. Oh, yeah. yeah and it's like three felonies, day. yeah, three felonies a day. Oh, okay. Any American, but here's the catch, any American citizen, Rob, <laughs> see, if you don't claim that citizenship. Yeah, I'm not one of those. It, well, people don't know, they know that here in Denmark. You can face the state and deny the state and claim you're a living man. And ah, leave me alone. I want to live out here in the weeds. And they'll let, you, they'll let you do it. It's just so rare for somebody to be that willing to not be attached to the state because that's what they, they're a tribe. It's weird. Hard to explain. Yeah. But I could not see the people that I associate with here in, in the town I live in. You want to do the research? Well, I'm sorry? Research the condition of statelessness. Oh, I live the, see, I live with a status on paper. I know. Cirque is the West tied side. to the state. Yeah, but wait, wait. But her thinking is like my thinking. But her behavior in, in you know, she's like a chameleon. When she goes to work, she's at work. Yes, when she comes home. Thing. But, yeah, I can't do I'm that. Same you know, I, my girl agrees with me 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But she's going to play by the rules. Yeah, isn't that weird how she, they can do she that? She's not going to rock the boat. She's not going to uh, uh, go. She's not going to fight City Hall because she's, she's comfortable. Exactly. She's so, comfortable. You know, she, she worked 26 oh. years for the state of Texas. And she's yeah, got, uh, you know, and yeah. and she worked her ass off for what she has, yeah. and yeah. she's comfortable. She's she's got herself set up uh, in a sweet way, you know. She's exactly, got, she's got it going on, you know. And so she's not gonna she's not gonna fuck up her 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 deal. It's not gonna and bite the you. Feed you, yeah. you know. And that's the that's what's so insidious about it is the only way you can be what they call quote unquote successful is mm. to make yourself dependent upon their system. Otherwise you're gonna get you're gonna get uh, uh knocked back, knocked down and, and uh denied at every turn. Well, I titled so, this show on the now, now you see it, go to now you don't. don't. You know, I say I don't go to class, and I did go to the class. That remember when I had that uh, thing with my face, the yeah. palsy thing, the palsy yeah. palsy thing. And yeah, you I said you were went, numb on I your. Went into the, I went into the class, and I almost did not get to see get get in because I don't have an ID. I don't have a social security card. I don't have any of that. Mm -hmm. And so I go in there, and I'm like, no, don't got none of that. Yeah. Now, I give them a cover story and say I lost it all in the hurricane down in Texas. But just so they'll accept the fact yeah. that I don't have it. it. I um, understand. Yeah. And they had to actually go to the, the administrator or somebody and get special permission from them to see me. That's how hard it is to live as a, someone without a driver's license or papers. Oh, yeah, sure. That's, a, that's I've how been, hard it is I've to live without papers or uh, their pet term. I'm undocumented. 
Yeah, well, I've been doing the no ID thing for a long time, but uh, when I needed to travel or like use a utility or hook up a utility, something like that, mm -hmm. then I I had that for ID. And when I was in California in 2000, what was it? Like 2000, somewhere in there, I had a, a situation come up where I would have a better place to live, and all I had to do was just hook up the uh, electricity, change it over, and get it get it working. Because yeah. they didn't have money to, to do it themselves. Yeah. And sure enough, I had the money, but the only idea I had was a passport, right? So they go, oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, watch this. So we go to the uh, electrical place, whatever they hook, where you go to pay to have them hook it up. And the first thing the girl does is give me shit. And I said, go get your supervisor. I'll wait. She says, this is an ID. I bet, bet, bet. I, no, no, no. Here, go, 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 go. Do, and she brings her person back and they go, yeah, she doesn't understand. She's never seen a passport before. <laughs> wow. How do, you, how do you put people in situations where they, they make your decisions for you based on the information you give them and they don't even know what they're fucking looking at? Yeah. Because the first thing, the first thing that happened on my side was, it's not going to work. I said, just calm down. They, this girl just doesn't know what she's doing. So the lack of uh, familiarity with the power of the passport, yeah. it is huge. Okay. And when you have one, you find out. You, well, you got to be a little like Rob with the mask. You got to tell people, go get your boss, dummy. You can't say dummy. They just get mad. Yeah. Yeah, you don't but you go to the yeah, you go to the higher ups that understand yeah. what the real stuff is, and it's a different world. It's like how can you work for somebody and be so stupid and keep your job? Yeah, I don't get it. Maybe that's, they don't. Maybe they just something you learn when you study law. Months. When you study I, law, you learn. You always go to the principal. Yeah, but see, as much as I hate the ID, as the much as you do. It, without it, my life would have been different. Yeah. I'd use the ID to, to acquire travel opportunity that yeah. came my way. I can't yeah, even go get a freaking hotel room. It, I couldn't have done it. I can't even go get rid of a hotel room. You can't rent a hotel room without an ID anymore. Right. Now, and that's a long credit card. card. And a credit card. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I remember yeah. Motel 6, you know, 12 bucks here. <laughs> yeah. And I, I thought it was for one of the rich box. Okay, well, you're a little older than me. But I thought it was too much money when I was paying $12 to stay in a motel. I said, wow, you guys are ripping me off, you bastards. <laughs> yeah. You know how long now it took me to unload that, that truck? Anything for under 70 60 And that's for a dive. Mm -hmm. Exactly. See, and we've let this happen through the fractional reserve banking practices of our friends Israel. You know? Mm -hmm. And people don't want it. They don't want to look at that side. Well, we're at the end of the show anyway. But I think yeah, that's, that's the that's blinders are on. Another very convoluted and complex uh, thing. It's actually really simple, but it's hard to wrap your mind around. Hmm. Well, I don't know. It's not that hard. I think it's just a matter of well, really it's hard to, to it's hard to get somebody eyes. else to wrap their mind around it if they if they are not in that mindset. Well, do you ever ask them for their explanation? You know, well, why are you wearing the mask? And they, let them tell you why they're wearing it. Yeah. Before you tell them why they shouldn't, it might help. Yeah. <laughs> let them tell yeah, you exactly true. what the ether is, because they don't know. I don't know. The ether is the ambient magnetic field of where you happen to be located. Period. Yeah. Oh. Most people don't even, <laughs> yeah, she's going to get deer in the headlights with that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, this show went quick. Yeah, it did. Wow, yeah. Well, I had a good time. Thanks yeah, a lot, Larry. And thanks a lot, Rob, for Thank doing you. this shit with me. Yeah, thanks, Rob and Flash. I really enjoyed it. Thanks. For, I, I think thanks that for the people that do pay attention to what you guys have to say about the electrical stuff and specifically yeah. that that is someday this is going to be important and just it's fun to be a yeah. part of it now yeah yeah it's, 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 uh, it's, okay. we really well i'll see you guys next week us, Larry, all of the all of the 
knowledge and technology oh, yeah. you're bringing to the to the world. Oh yeah, it's just stuff. Yeah, yeah. But you're the guy. You're the guy carrying the bag, so we're gonna call you out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. It's been fun. See you later. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye, bye.